telescope. Welcome at Leipzig. of up to 60 miles per hour here with the storm and I'm yeah good evening or good morning or uh, good day to you John depending on your time zone so I'm here in Leipzig Germany again has some problems with the, uh, with the location and I'm walking towards the city center of Leipzig to have a look, an evening look at the uh, so-called Saxon Beach. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a storm at all, but there are uh, some stormy peaks from time to time. So I heard from some Britons and Germans well, up to up to about eighty or ninety miles per hour. Ah, I don't know something. Else. David and all the others who have joined right now, Sam for example, welcome to Leipzig, Germany. I'm here uh, uh, at the area of a uh, former uh, freight railway station that has been here, so Auto Schalade Bahnhof. walking uh, towards the uh, city center here. And as soon as I reach the city center I have to check in at the Saxon Beach area and I'll check whether uh, it's played at all this evening. It might be when the, when the games have been stopped this evening. So I will see. Yeah, 
Yeah, but it's true, John. There's a low pressure area that's moving through Germany, yeah. And probably uh, tomorrow in the morning where uh, everything everything will be fine again. So Hi Gabriel, hello to Mexico. Hello nach Mexico. Oh, ich habe Sand im Auge. Ah, there's some sand in my eyes. When the wind pushes to my face. No Leipzig. No. It's where uh, uh, I think tenth uh, the largest city in Germany at the moment. So yeah, it's true, John. That's absolutely true. It's not it's not common in Germany that you have oh, such low pressure, quite strong low pressure systems going through the middle of Europe and Germany in July. But as far as I heard, uh, all the El Nino uh, phenomenon and stuff uh, are really, really strong at all this year in this year. So all the meteorologists say that there are some very extreme uh, weather uh, events happening or possible uh, possible to happen worldwide so it's also true for Germany so far so with summer we have a uh, uh, constant uh, change between very very hot days with 33 degrees Celsius plus and when the such low pressure systems going through and much lower temperatures So it's a really in, in Germany uh, people say or meteorologists say something like zigzag summer. So you have some days of really nice and hot summer weather and when you have weather that uh, remembers you more uh, to autumn or so. However, since Germans like to go by bike, especially the people of Leipzig who like to go by bike, there are still some bikers on the streets. But of course, not as much as I would see here uh, uh, if there was not that windy weather today. So, over there, there is a historic building that has been a former uh, natural gas tank here for the power, for power plant where it's situated just over there so we have here just one kilometer away from the center of Leipzig we have a huge power plant uh, that's using natural gas as far as I know to produce electricity and uh, some heat some hot water for heating systems so it's called Fernwärme in Germany Hello Brian, greetings to Canada, nice, nice that you have joined here, welcome to Leipzig this evening, hello, 
Ich bin auf dem Weg in Richtung Stadt. I'm on my way towards the city center. And here on the right hand side, uh, where is uh, situated the former Stadtbad. So this has been a public bath and swimming hall. It has been built and open uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, but it's closed since 15 or 20 years. Meanwhile, so the city of Leipzig and the foundation that tries to support this uh, former Stadtbad, they are looking for support for people uh, to join in and uh, maybe some, sometime or someone to find an, uh, an investor who might help to restore the whole building here because that's rather huge this alte Stadtbad so my personal my personal hope would be that this that this Stadtbad uh, gets reopened as close as possible to its uh, historic usage so Hopefully this will happen some when, but uh, right now there seem to be some some limitations, some administrative administrative limitations to do that. And of course, it's the question uh, how to gain enough money for the, when operating with as above, and of course to. Uh, get the money uh, to restore that. Hi Julie, how are you today? Nice to meet you here. I'm just on my way to a beach volleyball event but I just stopped here on the Stadtbad. So the former public uh, bath and swimming hall here in Leipzig. It's rather windy, yeah, so there are peaks uh, that reach up to 60 miles per hour, 90 kilometers per hour roughly. So and this is the former Stadtbad here. There are some events uh, in some rooms that have been already restored, uh, but it probably needs uh, an amount of at least uh, 20 to 30 million uh, euro to restore the whole complex here. So. A word for today, Julie. Ah, I have to think of. I, I just had one in mind. Ah, yeah, I know. Ha! Since... I, I will give you one hint uh, before I give you a word. So, uh, today we started the... Or yesterday we started the, the second Bundesliga uh, playing soccer and football here in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, no schwan, no? Today uh, I gave you a word without a sch. So yeah, yesterday uh, the second Bundesliga started and today RB Leipzig uh, started into the season and we, we won in Frankfurt am Main, uh, uh, visiting uh, FSV Frankfurt. Uh, we won uh, by one nil. So today's word it's babbeln. So the word is babbeln and it's written and spelled um, B E uh, double B L N or E L N, the last three characters. So the word is babbeln. Yeah, right, Julie, you, you got it, yeah. So maybe you have a rough idea when I say that this word is somehow connected uh, to football and soccer. So you have another try to, uh, to think of uh, a nice translation. So it's, it's connected to playing soccer and uh, soccer and football. Hallo, meine Lumpa, hallo rein. 
Uh, no, ja, genau. <laughs> so Babylon is just it, it's the really really simple, so to say. Yeah, yeah, that's because of the wind. I just go a bit nearer to, closer to the microphone, so maybe you can understand me a bit better. Yeah. So Babylon is just the Saxon word uh, for playing soccer, playing football. So if a child says here in Saxon, I want to uh, go Babylon, ich möchte Babylon, when it just means that he, or if it's a girl, she uh, wants to play football. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely right, <laughs> Geely. Yeah, so of course not for American football, but for, for football with soccer. So these are nice false friends. Oh, some, sometimes uh, using it. So that's your word for today, Julie. And maybe uh, Brian was, was still here. Yeah, Brian is still here. So Brian also knows some. Yeah, it's called football in Germany. Yeah, right, Jimmy. Yeah. And the other thing, that's American football. So, yeah. But the, but the word soccer is gets uh, more common uh, also here in Germany. So. Yeah, if, I believe, but it's maybe if I wouldn't be interested uh, also in American football and uh, or well, also uh, some other special American uh, sports like basketball that are common here uh, in the USA, I might uh, not have known this also. So I think. There are also some, some German or a lot of German people who don't know. <laughs> so my favorite spot, uh, it, it's really, really uh, different. So I'm, I like to watch very various uh, sports events. Of course, uh, football or soccer is, uh, is one of it. Uh, I also like athletics. Yeah, a tram. So this tram here. I will show you the whole length. You see the blue and the yellow line here, so that's the blue and the yellow color of Leipzig. And this tram is as long as uh, 45 meters. So it's said to be well, the largest or the longest uh, tram uh, in Europe. Yeah, die Straßenbahn. Absolutely correct, Ryan. Uh, the Straßenbahn, the tram, yeah, 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 I ride it. I have a ticket of my wife here with me, so if I'm going home later on, I will probably use it. Uh, Straßenbahn is the German word for tram. So it's really great that you, that you meet here. I met here, Brian and Julie, so we can help each other a bit. Um, kids who are not in school already. Funkelnagel neu, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, kids that don't go to school already, way uh, ride for free in a tram, and also in other uh, public transportation uh, vehicles and. As soon as uh, the kids go to school, you have to buy some. You have to buy tickets. So uh, kids aged who are aged up to six or seven years may ride for free, Julie. So yeah, if not school aged, yeah. And as soon as you as you are school aged, you get uh, some kind of a student's uh, uh, identity card. It's no real. Uh, identity card. Thanks John for the compliment. 
uh, and when you have or your parents have a p opportunity to buy a rather cheap ticket I don't know it's 10 or 15 euros per month so ah, thanks Julie but personally I dream of a uh, public transportation system uh, that's free of charge that's my personal dream and I know it or I think that I've heard about it that uh, Stockholm or so uh, had some trials doing this so probably you, you, had, you would have to take some, some other fee or you would have to ask uh, for example companies uh, that are located here in the city uh, to give some amount of money uh, uh, to have a free public transport uh, transportation system so uh, but it's not much uh, just free buses uh, however of course uh, it just depends on on the exact needs and uh, on the structures in the cities at all so I think that this has, has been a bit uh, different also in the USA um, before all the automotive thing started so I think so I'm, I'm a bit confused right now that there are so many trams going here to the uh, uh, Hauptbahnhof Westseite with three buses. Oh, I think we could uh, open just one line and try to uh, to reach most of the quarters here in Leipzig, uh, but uh, just yeah, <laughs> once or uh, twice a day. I think with this would be a problem here in here in Germany if we have. We had just three buses, so the uh, whole infrastructure, streets, and all stuff uh, wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be uh, able to take all the uh, traffic that would uh, arise on the streets or the individual traffic. So. That sounds really great, Ryan. So if you have uh, fur further information about this, uh, just you can just uh, send me a link or so if there's some some information available uh, via Twitter, so that I can look it up if there is some information because I'm rather interested in all the innovative uh, things and to check whether this or that approach might work here in Germany or in Leipzig especially or some of the, some other areas as well so yeah, that's tram number seven here so this tram is usually not going this way but it seems that there's, uh, that there's some Difficult to say. Um, there are several statistics. Uh, mostly, you get uh, in some statistics um, well, uh, the percentage of uh, ways or kilometers uh, by car by, by public transport and all stuff. And I think in, at the moment here in Leipzig, uh, 
where people use their cars for or the cars used for roughly 35% uh, of each way. So roughly one third or a bit more than one third of the ways are taken by car. And the other another third uh, is taken by public transport as far as I know. 20% uh, I think or 15 to 20 is uh, taken by, by a bike and we, our 15% or so are taken uh, by feet so that's, that's a really really a huge difference between Germany and the USA for example or Canada I think so of course the, the distances at all are not that large between not that large between the several uh, places we have to go to, to go so for example uh, you also have in Germany some large uh, some large uh, shopping malls outside the cities um, but mostly you have in all the different quarters uh, you have some some quarterly centers or quarter centers where you find everything uh, to shop that you need for daily life so that's why for example you reach uh, you reach a truck store and uh, or a supermarket and all the stuff mostly just within 5 ten, or 10 or 15 minutes by feet and you have just to go a bit further if you need much more uh, to, uh, to walk to Darmstadt I have just to calculate it so Darmstadt is uh, away from Leipzig I would say roughly 400 kilometers and yeah 400 kilometers if I, if I uh, would walk let's say 8 kilometers per hour but this would be ra rather fast I would be running about 50 hours or so if I didn't if I didn't calculate it ro the wrong way so <laughs> so I'm now here and uh, already in the center of the city so over there that's where it's one of the main entrances and entrances of Leipzig main station. It's on the western side and you have a similar uh, similar view on the eastern side over there but it's behind the trees. And I will I will walk through the through main station uh, another time probably and yeah it was the Leipzig main station was the uh, largest uh, headed uh, station, so Kopfbahnhof. So the train or the track railway track ended here, and the trains had to be uh, had to change direction and uh, go out of the station to the other thing. Yeah, I will. I will uh, be inside. Uh, something later, not today, because I'm, I want to have a look at the Sachsen beach uh, also, just for a quarter of an hour or so. So it has been the largest uh, Kopfbahnhof in whole Europe, with uh, I think 26 uh, tracks originally, uh, or platforms. And meanwhile you have where let's think about I think 20 yeah, you have 20 tracks uh, yeah I'm going to scope it today so well I'm going to scope uh, Saxon Beach I will look if there uh, if there's played at all because of the weather I don't know if we'll due to wind we had to, to stop it maybe for today so yeah 26 tracks I meanwhile you have uh, overground I think 20 tracks that end here and you have uh, over there you can go into the underground and you have meanwhile two underground tracks uh, that are going
going from here, from the northern part of the city, just through the whole city uh, into first into this direction towards mar the marketplace. That's about 300 meters over there, and then it goes further uh, to the uh, so-called Bayerischer Bahnhof. So originally there was no connection between between Leipzig main station here in the northern part of the city and uh, some other stations uh, uh, in the southern part of the city and so you had to wait uh, up to 15 minutes plus minus for your train if you just uh, went through Leipzig for your train to continue so but meanwhile, the, north, the connections between uh, the north and the south of Leipzig, uh, the regional trains are going through the so-called city tunnel. So that's underground. And I, I will go and show you some scenes of the city tunnel, so the Leipzig subway, uh, some then also. Uh, there are some people who have such houses, so for example, the goal is where I'm uh, sometimes. Thanks, Brian, you're very welcome. Uh, so, in the city centers, uh, you mostly have apartment buildings, yeah, that's right, Julie. Uh, but if I, if I go outside the city center and uh, walk around, uh, in some parts of Leipzig, you have uh, some smaller buildings. Uh, apa not apartment houses, but uh, one family or two family houses. Um, so yeah, but this this starts about two kilometers uh, far from the uh, city center, so roughly. So the city center of Leipzig is just like a ring. Uh, so you have you have a street, a street that I crossed uh, just a couple of minutes ago that's going round in a, as a circle uh, around the city center and the whole city center is or not the whole but most of the city center is just uh, free of cars and just uh, people who live here or who have their uh, their shops or their business here they are allowed to go there Ah, Brian, yeah, that would be really great. But if not this year, so maybe next year or the year after. So just let me know as soon as you know uh, when you will be back in, in Germany. So we can come and we can talk about this and we might do something together. Or I can show you something here in Leipzig that you don't already know. Or I can give you some other tips what might be interesting for you or if you have some some business purposes or so I can also uh, have a look to, to give you some some contacts and all the stuff so I'm now here in the Nikolaistraße so this street is rather famous do especially to it uh, to its church here the Nikolai Kirche so that's the church of uh, St. Nikolai or St. Nikolaus maybe in English so this church was somehow the, the starting point for the peaceful revolution in 1989 so there have been the famous Monday prayers uh, where people yeah you're welcome John thanks for joining and thanks for your heart I'm looking forward to seeing you again here on my scopes or to find also your scopes to watch so what's it here the Nikolai Kirche the Nikolai Church yeah, we had here the famous Monday prayers in 1989, right, Brian? Absolutely correct. So you remember a lot of stuff 
about Germany and Leipzig here. That's great. But maybe some 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 parts might have changed in the last couple of years. So on the 9th of October uh, 1989, where it had been the decisive, the decisive Mon Monday prayer and the demonstration on the ring with uh, roughly 70,000 uh, people. So I remember the times very good, but not here from Leipzig because uh, I'm, I was born. <laughs> nice, Brian. Uh, I was born in Dresden and lived in Dresden until 2006. Um, but in Dresden, there had also been uh, a lot of demonstration stuff and uh, other things. Um, so I remember this, and of course, I remember parts of uh, the, uh, the scenes and the films and movies that have been taken from the Monday prayers and the demonstrations here also in Leipzig. And there's some remembering uh, to all this, those things that happens here each year on the 9th of October, and that's called the Lichtfest. As far as I know, we didn't demonstrate, um, but we, we gave back, for, for example, where uh, the, the, the uh, cards of the yeah, that's that's right, Brian. Yeah, that's 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 true, Julie. So here in this church, here have been the, the Monday prayers uh, every Monday, and that was the starting point for the demonstrations on the city ring here around Leipzig. So the place where I've been here uh, in front of the main station where I walked uh, about 70,000 people uh, in 1989. Yeah, I will just stay here, Chile. And there was so 70,000 people walked around uh, the city center and they had to fear that the uh, policemen and uh, security service and, and all the stuff. Yeah. Great, you're welcome, Chile. Yeah, but the people walked around here. Uh, I will, I will go the, this route probably uh, also uh, sometime and show you the, the exact scenery. So the people walked around and they had to feel that uh, policemen and uh, secret service and all, all people uh, would get the, uh, the command to fire into the crowd. But fortunately, all people, all politicians, and all the administration here in the city of Leipzig and of the Stasi, that has been the secret service, uh, the, the internal uh, GDR secret service in those times, uh, we didn't get the command uh, to fire into the crowd uh, of 70,000 people. So everything stayed peaceful. And yeah. Erich Hanecker, Mr. Hanecker wasn't, uh, wasn't invited, right, Brian? And there have been, there have been a, uh, this, uh, a guy, a man called Kurt Masur, for example. He was the leader uh, the, uh, of the, not only the church members, but it started here with the church members. So first, of course, the church members uh, came to came to the Monday prayers uh, each Monday, uh, and after the Monday prayers, there have been the secret service and the police here, and they took people away who uh, who said uh, things against the GDR regime and uh, and all the stuff. And as m the more people got to know about this, uh, what was happened, uh, we there came more and more people to Monday prayers and also to the demonstrations. Yeah, the, the problem was that uh, there was no real freedom here in the GDR in 1989. Um, so 
yeah, where entire city came out and protested in front of the church. That's right, Brian. Absolutely correct. Um, yeah, we we didn't have real freedom here, so we uh, GDR people were just allowed uh, to uh, go on vacation into the eastern parts of Europe, Russia, and all the stuff. And you weren't really allowed to go to the western parts of Germany, for example, or to Western Europe, only if you have s had some uh, some relatives there, if your mother or your grandparents or someone else. No real freedom, yeah, no real freedom. So we were we were allowed to to go to to Poland and to the Czech Republic and uh, Bulgaria. Uh, and all the stuff, yeah, I the eastern parts of Germany, so the GDR, the German Democratic Republic, Republic. but uh, yeah, the name was uh, German Democratic Republic, but uh, it wasn't really democratic, so it was a socialist or a communist uh, dictatorship somehow. Yeah, for us, or for many people in the eastern parts of Germany, it was was really, really positive in the first moment however some things that ha that happened afterwards uh, weren't wet great so uh, a lot of companies uh, based in the western parts of germany just came over and sold their sometimes old stuff or bad stuff bad quality uh, things here uh, darmstadt is in the western part of germany so in the former B brd so uh, in my personal opinion, uh, the western parts of Germany uh, really benefited from the uh, uh, fall of the wall. Because there are some companies that have been uh, or that have gone bankrupt meanwhile uh, in the reunified Germany, like for example, uh, yeah, a communist dictatorship, that's right, protected from the. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Erich Honecker was born, I think, in, uh, in, Saar, in the Saarland, as far as I know. Um, yeah, so after the fall of the Berlin Wall, we have come companies to, so, to sell uh, their cars and uh, consumer electronics and all the stuff, but they took, in my opinion, uh, too high prices uh, with respect to the quality of their products so we just yeah we benefited from a fall, uh, fall of the wall and the problem was afterwards that a lot of uh, eastern german companies and factories and all the stuff had to be closed because it was said okay we are not uh, productive enough and uh, it's too expensive to to produce uh, some goods there and all the stuff so there was a really, really high unemployment rate uh, that has been risen uh, in the years between 1990 and 1995. So I think at the maximum there have been uh, up to 20% of the people uh, who have been uh, unemployed in this time. But fortunately, meanwhile, the development has taken some other direction. So. Uh, the eastern parts of Germany still will have a lack of employment, so we have still have the highest unemployment rates, or mostly the highest un unemployment rates in Germany. For Germans, it's it's I think it's well known, at least for the eastern uh, for the East German guys. I'm not quite sure uh, about the uh, West German Western German uh, society. Um, I think. Yeah, a great brand new highway system, right, <laughs> Brian? So there have been positive effects uh, with, a Berlin fall of, uh, with the fall of the Berlin Wall and there have been negative effects. For me personally, the positive effects uh, have, are definitely more, uh, have more weight or much more weight than the negative effects. But that's, that might also be because uh, my parents, for example, weren't directly affected Yeah, yeah, but the employment uh, is challenging. Yeah, that's right. So, 
uh, we have still have a problem with, that the unemployment rate is near to 10 percent however it uh, went down uh, from something around 13 percent or so within the last three or four years here in saxony and meanwhile we are yeah yeah compared to the western parts of germany uh, definitely it's still it's still the case but it's not that extreme anymore so 10 percent is still high uh, i think whole, in whole saxony the rate uh, went down even uh, under nine percent i think uh, in the last month so month so but that's only one one, po one part of the truth because the other part of the truth is that the uh, eastern parts of Germany uh, also have much lower wages uh, compared to the western parts of Germany. So the whole economical structure is still uh, far behind in many cases. Yeah, I'm. I'm optimistic that uh, the six percent could be realistic uh, I, within the next three to five years. Uh, realistic to reach because the yeah the expectations are rather good here in in, in Saxony especially. Yeah, our parking garages, money makers. Yeah, <laughs> really, that's right. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, on the, on the other hand, you have a, really have a problem that. Uh, uh, that the wages are still rather low in many cases. So especially uh, all the services that affect people directly. So like uh, working in a bakery or uh, in a flowery or uh, as a haircut or also uh, these jobs are really really bad paid here and there are a lot of people who need uh, additional uh, state support or uh, support by the state so this will hopefully also uh, change in the future but yeah we will see <laughs> so i will n i will now go offline for a moment and i will just go forward uh, towards the saxon beach and i will have a look if there's still some action there if, if so um, Maybe you, if you're able to join, just, just join. Yeah, right, Julie. <laughs> that's true. Thanks for your hearts, Julie and Brian especially. So that's really, really great to know uh, some people who are really, really interested here in my scopes. And Julie, I just, uh, I just had a look into one of your scopes in uh, replay, just one hour ago or so and gave you some hearts. I didn't have much time because we, uh, we were uh, preparing for the uh, evening meal. Uh, but I will have a, a closer look later, later again. So, You want some Tresno Stein? Yeah, Brian, uh, we, can, we can of course think of that. So I can, I, I can buy some Tresno Stein and, I'm, and I can, can send it. I can give you the, the rates or the, the price of, of it or maybe I can uh, give you a, this just as a present. I just have to check the prices at the moment. I'm not sh sure how, ma how much it costs uh, to, uh, to send it to Canada. But I can organize this, Brian. So. And of course you have to, to decide which, uh, if you want the or original Dresden Stollen or if you want another sort of, because meanwhile we have some other kind like chocolate stolen and all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting idea, yeah. So we might, we might, uh, make an appointment for that and I uh, will have a look on the uh, Stritzelmarkt in Dresden and when you might have a look onto the, onto the 
finished on and can decide, okay, which one to buy, maybe. So thanks for for joining, thanks for for your comments here, also for the uh, for the support uh, to uh, to give the information. Definitely, I will definitely do this, Brian. I will definitely do do this this year. So. Last year I couldn't uh, do this because Periscope wasn't <laughs> wasn't uh, on the market at all. But this year I will definitely do do this. So have a great day over there, and maybe if I <laughs> yeah, and maybe if I am going to to stream some things from uh, Saxon Beach uh, today in, in the evening. You might join again if you have the time to do so. As wise, just enjoy your day. And I'm looking forward to seeing your scopes and to see you back again in my scopes as soon as the time fits. So, have a great time over there.